Joining us to talk about the market rally and or the fade going into the close and the latest on trade, Lindsay Bell. She's from Alley Invest and still with us. And also joining us is Megan Shu from Wilmington Trust. Stefan Selig, he is the former Undersecretary of Commerce for International Trade under President Obama. He joins us on the phone. Stefan, I'm going to go to you first. I know we only have partial headlines and information at this point, but what do you make of what we know about these three phases that are yet to be papered and what the president at least is calling a substantial deal? Well, um, I'm not sure it's substantial. It certainly isn't the complete and comprehensive deal that was being talked about. Um, I'm not surprised by where we ended up. In fact, I presaged this yesterday in my comments on uh, with you all on Power Lunch. The question is going to be um, the timing and the likelihood of re making real progress in phase two and phase three, which I can continue to believe is going to be highly problematic. And as a result of that, the overhang on the market uh, is not going to go away. And we're going to be living in a period of uncertainty until we see how those two phases play out. Mike, what's your take as how the market's market settled here? Significant gains. You've still got that risk on move in yields, which largely held a decent move in the dollar as well, which is helpful. The broad setup was, was positive, but you had six hours of presumably people buying a lot more than they were selling on the hopes of a confirmation of a trade deal. So once it came into the basic kind of the minimally acceptable terms, meaning, uh, you know, next week's tariffs don't go into effect, nothing on December, and we're still kind of living with this right out ahead of us, the need to get further agreement, I do think it makes sense that we sold on the news. You know, also goes without saying it's a Friday. We live in a pretty fast-moving news tape right now. I don't know that anybody who was making money this week felt like they wanted to go into the weekend maximum risk, given what's been going on. Megan, I think you're exercising a lot more patience than maybe some others. Tell us what you make of these headlines and how you're positioning yourself going into this weekend here on a Friday. Well, we have been very hesitant to trade the trade headlines because we just see it as being, you know, when you think about where we were earlier this week and where we are today, we've basically come full circle in terms of trade sentiment. So I think today is definitely a positive, certainly for the markets. I think what we would like to see is we would have preferred to have seen some sign of tariffs coming off because we know that they have weighed on manufacturing and starting to see signs that they're bleeding into the labor market and services as well here in the U.S., and we know the impact has been significant globally. Um, so for our part, we have been uh, neutral across our equity position, as well as neutral to sectors, um, because we just see these binary risks around trade headlines as really swinging um, sector positioning and sector favorability. But within those, we've been trying to pick spots that could do well in a protectionist environment, um, such as things within uh, sectors within industrial, such as defense contractors, um, off-price retail, as well as more longer-term sectoral growth stories like cloud computing um, and things that are um, geared toward, like tower REITs, for example, geared toward the 5G infrastructure build-out. So really looking for areas of the market that can continue to do well if we oscillate within this trade environment. Today happens to be a good day. Next week, we could get some news that's a little bit more negative.